If you are a hacker, pen tester, security researcher, or just another person who pings Google in front of friends to look cool, then it's likely that you must have already known about some Linux distros which are particularly made for them. Today, we are going to explore one such Linux distro, Parrot Security OS, one of the leading Linux distribution in penetration testing and ethical hacking. So let's quickly go through today's agenda first. We will begin by discussing how Linux distributions are suitable for ethical hacking and different type of Linux distros that are available for ethical hacking and penetration testing. Then we will begin with our today's topic, which is Parrot Security OS. We will discuss its features, its history, if or not Parrot Security OS is suitable for you. Moving on, we will see how Parrot Security OS is different from Kali Linux. And then I'll show you how to install Parrot Security OS using VMware software. And finally, we'll end this session by taking a look at few popular Parrot Security OS tools. So I hope agenda was clear to you guys. Let's get started then. A security focused operating system is a hacker's best friend as it helps a hacker to detect the weaknesses in computer systems or computer networks. Whether you want to pursue a career in information security or you are already working as a security professional or if you are just interested in this specific field for fun, a decent Linux distro that suits your purpose is always a must. Now if you're wondering what a Linux distro is, it is a Linux distribution that has been curated to perform security related tasks. And most of the time, a Linux distro will have a Linux base of Ubuntu or Debian flavor, and they usually have some custom tools pre-installed in it as well. As you guys know, Linux is the best choice for security professionals for obvious reasons, and hence, most of the distros are usually built on it. A Linux distro can help you in performing analysis, ethical hacking, penetration testing, digital forensic tasks, and various other auditing purpose. But guys, apart from these distros, there are other open source tools as well that you can bundle and use as per custom requirements. But using these distros have a lot of advantages. Like first of all, they save a lot of time and effort that you need to spend when you are dealing with custom requirements. Secondly, they help beginners to easily start with security testing without having to get into the nitty gritties of operating system. And lastly, the most popular reason is you have great pool of distros that you can choose from. Most of the time, Kali Linux is the obvious first choice of operating system for every new hacker. If you ask me why, the obvious answer would be because Kali Linux has a lot of cool things. It comes bundled with a curated collection of tools. Moreover, these tools are organized into easy to navigate menu and a live boot option that's very newbie user friendly, as in it's very friendly to new ethical hacker. But guys, Kali Linux isn't the only distribution which is targeted at pen testers. There are many exciting alternatives that may better fit your use case. Anyway, let's begin our discussion with Kali Linux. It was developed by Offensive Security as a rewrite of Backtrack. Kali Linux distros tops the list of best operating system for ethical hacking purposes. And then there is Parrot Security OS, which is our today's discussion. It is a mixture of frozen box operating system and Kali Linux. It's the second most popular operating system for ethical hacking and penetration testing as well. And then you have Backbox Linux. It's a Ubuntu based operating system with its focus mainly on security assessment and penetration testing. Then you have Pen2, an excellent hacking operating system with a wide variety of tools that you can choose from. Apart from these, you have Deft Linux, Blackout Linux, Cyborg, Bugtrack, and many others. But as for today's session, we will be discussing about Parrot operating system. Parrot OS is the second most popular Linux distro for ethical hacking after Kali Linux. It is a comprehensive portable security lab that you can use for cloud penetration testing, computer forensics, reverse engineering, hacking, cryptography, and many other security purposes. Now a little bit about its history. The first release of Parrot OS appeared in April 10, 2013. Originally, it was developed as part of Frozen Box. Now it has grown to include a community of open source developers, professional security experts, advocates of digital rights, and Linux enthusiasts from all over the world. Well, compared to others, Parrot Security OS promises a lightweight operating system and it's highly efficient. Along with its plethora of legally recognized tools, you also get the opportunity to work and surf anonymously, which is like a granted wish to an ethical hacker or any penetration tester. We'll learn about other features in the later part of the session. 
So moving on, since its release in 2013, Parrot has grown rapidly and currently offers many different flavors targeted towards different use cases. For example, like I said, we have Parrot Security. It's the original Parrot OS and is designed with penetration testing, forensics, hacking, development, and privacy in mind. Then you also have Parrot Home, which is targeted towards desktop users. It strips out the penetration testing packages and presents a nicely configured Debian environment. Then you have Parrot Air. It's focused on wireless penetration testing. Parrot Studio. It's designed with multimedia creation in mind. Then you have Parrot Cloud, the most popular. It targets server applications, giving the user access to full suite of penetration testing tools included in Parrot Security. But it doesn't have a graphical front end like we do in Parrot Security. Moving on, we also have Parrot IoT. It's designed for low resources devices such as Orange Pi, Raspberry Pi, and you have Pine64 and many others. So it's true that Parrot Security OS doesn't have large community of users behind it as Kali Linux does, but the distribution has been gaining a lot of momentum recent years, so things could be very different just a year or two from now. So let me convince you more. Let's just discuss the features of Parrot Security OS. Let's start with the system requirements. It's based on Debian 9. It runs on a custom hardened Linux 4.5 kernel. It uses a Mate desktop and Light DM display manager. It requires a minimum of 256 MB RAM and works with both 32 and 64 bit systems as well as ARM compatible version. Apart from this, Parrot OS can also be installed on cloud and updated to perform cloud based security testing. So basically, it runs on Debian 9. It is compatible with 32 as well as 64 bit systems and ARM systems as well. And it requires a minimum of 256 MB RAM. So those are the system requirements. Moving on, it also supports anonymity. It offers a tool called a non serve, including anonymization of entire operating system. It comes with custom built anti forensic tools, interfaces for GPG and CRISP setup. Additionally, it also supports encryption tools such as LUKS, TrueCrypt, and VeraCrypt, and many others. Moving on, it also supports forensic boot option to shut boot automons plus many more. It braces Falcon programming language, multiple compilers, debuggers, and beyond. It also provides full support for developing frameworks for embedding systems and many other amazing features. So guys, these are a few features of Parrot OS. So basically, Parrot operating system supports anonymity. It offers different kind of cryptography tools. It also supports forensic mode, and it also provides opportunity to develop frameworks for embedded systems and many other amazing features. Moving on, before you go ahead and use Parrot OS, there are some important considerations that you need to take a look at. First of all, Parrot OS provides general purpose features like any other normal operating system. But guys, before you go ahead and use Parrot OS, there are some important considerations that you need to take a look at. First of all, it provides general purpose features like any other normal operating system does, but at its core, it is still tuned for security and forensics. Now let's see how different Parrot OS is from other distributions. Parrot is different from a general purpose distribution because it does not try to hide its features. For example, there is a tool called Parrot Update Reminder. It's simple yet powerful program. Using this program, you can check for system upgrades once a week. But instead of hiding the upgrade process behind a progress bar, like any other operating system, it shows the user the full upgrade process from the apt output. So you can see the upgrade process going on. Secondly, Parrot was designed to be a very comfortable environment for security experts and researchers. It includes many basic programs for daily use, which other penetration testing distributions usually exclude. Parrot security includes its own sandbox system. I mean, it provides a secure distribution. User applications in Parrot are protected to limit the damages in case if the system is compromised anytime. So this way, no harm is caused. So like we discussed earlier, it also supports digital forensics. Digital forensics experts need an environment that does not compromise their proof. So Parrot comes with automount functions which are disabled by default to allow forensics acquisitions to be performed in a very safe way. So before you go ahead and choose any of these operating system, make sure you check out their features or the services they offer and make sure if they are suitable for the task which you want to perform. But as for Parrot OS, these are its features we discussed earlier. And these are the certain points that you should take into consideration before you go ahead and use it. 
Now, if you're wondering who the Parrot Security is made for, well, it's made for security experts, digital forensics experts, engineering and IT students, researchers. You have journalists and hacktivists as well in the list. And you have the newbie hackers, police officers, and special security institutions. So basically, if you ask me, it's suitable for a student or the entry level security experts as well. So first, I'll show you how to install Parrot Security OS on VMware. So basically, when it comes to installation, you have two options. You can install Parrot Security OS alongside your operating system using dual boot option, or you can install it using any of these virtualization software like VirtualBox or VMware. As for today's session, I'll show you how to install it using VMware. So let's get started with our installation. So guys, just search for the Parrot Security OS, and it's most probably the first link that you find on the net. This is Parrot Security OS official website. As you can see, there's a little bit about its history, its features. It says it's based on Debian. It's designed for security development and privacy in mind. It also includes a laboratory for security and digital forensics experts. Along with that, it also focuses if you want to develop your own software and all that. And its project goals mostly are security, privacy, and development. This is the part which you should consider important development, unlike other operating systems. Its features, it's secure, lightweight when compared to Kali Linux or any other operating systems, and it's a free source. So go ahead and explore it. So as for the download options, you can go for security edition here. In the download menu here, you can see other options as well. It says home edition, security, and other builds. We discussed a few of the flavors of Pirate to us earlier. We discussed Pirate Home, Pirate Air, Pirate Studio, and many of those. Anyway, today we're concerned with Pirate Security. 4.5.1 is the current version that's running. So you have two options here to download. First of all, take a look at the size. It's 3.7 GB and 5.9 GB. So make sure whichever you want, you're downloading it, depending on your operating system requirements. And as you can see, this is a live plat installer ISO. This is a virtual appliance. You can choose any of these. If download is taking a little longer than you've expected, maybe you can go for Maris or a torrent. So I've already installed it. I'm not doing it. I have both ISO file as well as this OVA format install as well. Next thing we need to do is install VMware. So VMware, VMware Workstation Pro. So you have a download option here. You can go ahead and download it. You have for the free option here. You also have VMware Player, I guess. Wait, here I go for the link. Sorry about that. Here in the downloads. So you can go for Workstation Pro or you can also go for Workstation Player here. Any of this, whichever suits you. I've already downloaded it. It's going to take for a while. And then all you have to do is install, click on next and finish the installation process. So before you start your virtual machine, make sure you have your Pirot OS image, ISO file or UVA format, whichever is of your choice. And then here we go. VMware Workstation homepage. Yeah, as you can see, you already have a Pirot OS operating system installed here, a virtual machine installed here. This is I've installed it using ISO file. It's very easy. I'll show you how to do it. But if you have OVA format, all you have to do is click on this file menu here open. And as you can see, I have a Pirate Security OVA here and click and import it. That's all. Click select it and click on open. So I'm not going to show you how to do that. So it's very straightforward process. That's it. This is my ISO file. Let me show you to again how to install it anyway. Click on file or you can just go for create a new virtual machine here. Click on next and attach the ISO file. Browse. I have it in my local disk. Here I have Parrot Security and open. Next, it's a Linux. It Debian the latest version, which is 64 bit, and click on next. Give any suitable name for your virtual machine. Let's say Parrot Security. Okay, OS, and click on next. Let's assign about 40 GB. It again depends on what you want to do. If you're doing heavy tasks, maybe you can assign more disk. So as it asks, store virtual disk as a single file or split into multiple files. I'm going to choose single file. Click on next. And uh, you can always go ahead and make this customized hardware settings earlier later. But you can do it now as well. Customize hardware. I have NAT connection as for network adapter, memory 512. Let's just say 2GB. And uh, NAT, yeah, we set processors. I'm just designing one for now. Cool. And close. As you can see, the changes which are made are displayed here. Once you're satisfied with your settings with that you made, click on finish. You're good to go. Your security system has been displaying here. So like I said, you can always make settings later on. You have this edit virtual machine setting options here. Just click on this. Let me maximize the screen for you guys. 
So as you can see, the Pirate Security ISO is very flexible. There are quite a few options. You have uh, live mode, you have terminal mode, you have RAM mode. So basically live mode is just a standard live USB boot option. Just like you can see while you're installing Kali Linux. Suppose if you don't know how to install Kali Linux, there's a video on how to install it as well by Dureka. You can refer to that in the ethical hacking playlist. Okay, so coming back, sorry about that. You have a persistence mode, encrypted persistence, forensics mode. And all that terminal mode, as you can see, is another live boot option, but without graphical user interface. But the most popular one among new hackers or if you're the first time user is install option with a graphical user interface. So it's almost familiar with Kali Linux users. If you want to get a feel of Parrot security, if and all its features, maybe you can go for live mode. But if you want to get just started, then you can always go for install mode. I'm going to click on that and click on standard installer. So it's mounting all the installation uh, tools and all that. So once the machine is booted up, you'll be asked to select your preferred language in the grub menu, select the graphical installer options and click on, let's say English and uh, United States, American English. So then the loader will automatically install some additional components and configure your network related settings. It might take a while. So basically then the installer should prompt you for a host name and the root password. Let's give some root password. Give the password of your choice. Re-enter the password for verification. And now it's going to ask you to set up a user apart from the root user. So let's just say test user continue. I'm going to keep it as test continue and choose a password for the new user which is different from the root user password that you'll have to remember. So just give this new user a password. Continue re-enter the password. OK, let me just go back and. My mistake, let me try it again. Select your time zone. So basically after you've, you've set your password, it's asking you for the time zone. Let's say central eastern. So now the installer will provide you four choices about the partition of the disk. The easiest option for you is to use guided use entire disk option, which is the first option here. Experienced users can always go for manual partitioning method for more granular configuration options. So yeah, guided partitioning, I'm going to select that. Guide use entire disk. This is the disk where I want to store. So it's asking if you want to store all files in one partition or different. Let's just say all files in one partition and hit on continue. So now we'll have to confirm all the changes to be made to the disk on the host machine. Be aware that continuing will erase the data on the disk. So after that, you can just click on finish partitioning and writing disk thing. It's asking if you want to write the changes to the disk. Obviously, yes. So click yes. So once on confirming the partition changes, the installer will run through the process of installing the files. Let it install the system automatically. This may take a while. So I'm going to meet you guys once the installation is done. So once the installation is done, it'll ask you if you want to install the grub bootloader on your hard disk. Just say yes and click on enter device manually. Oh, sorry. Just click the device which is already there. Go back. The installation process is now almost complete. So guys, the installation is done. Once the installation is done, you can see the machine boots you into a made desktop environment. As in if you have chosen the install option, you'll be presented with a Lightium login screen. So basically you'll have to enter the password and the which you set up for the test user earlier, not the root password. Please do remember that. I'm sure you remember setting up a password for the user, right? That password and login. So here we go. So guys, here we are. As you can see, the machine boots you into the mate desktop environment. Let me pronounce it M-A-T-E. You can call it whatever you want, mate or mate desktop environment. So as you can see, it's very good looking. Apart from that, Parrot Security will automatically detect when updates are available and prompt you to update the system as soon as you install it. Here it's not showing it to me because I've already updated it. But otherwise, all you can do is just go to the terminal here. You can see a terminal option here, right? Go to terminal there and just say sudo apt get update. Last me for the password. Here we go. 
it might be i might have updated in another virtual machine anyway i installed the other one as well maybe it's in that anyway i'll update for you so let me just minimize this while it's updating let's go ahead and do other things oh it's almost done i guess yeah as you can see it's almost updated and it says 116 packages more can be upgraded and if i want i'll have to run update list if i want to see which of those packets are i have to just list out those using apt command here I'm not showing you to you guys so anyway when you're making use of it make sure your system always stays updated okay let's go back to exploring parrot to us so as you can see system is laid out in a very straightforward manner with a collection of tools that you might be familiar with if you've used in kali linux before the menu system is almost similar to kali linux and it's very easy to navigate the real difference is that parrot security is meant to be used as a daily driver as in your regular operating system to do the other things as well to prove that you can see you have sound and video options here a lot of programming languages options as well you have system tools and you have graphics included you have office applications or softwares you have uh, base you have math writer and planner just like any other normal operating system so while you can use kali linux as a desktop workstation it is really is a penetration testing distribution first i'm talking about kali linux So with Kali you need to build the system towards being a daily use system as in you start using Kali Linux you need to modify or you need to customize it in such a way that you make it more plausible or easy for you to use for the daily purposes but that's not the case with Parrot security OS its interface and everything is so good it almost appears like a normal operating system and it is like a very normal operating system so you have your penetration distance which are there and along with that you have your day to day applications are also there in this Now talking about the system requirements the default parrot security install uses about 313 MB of RAM so as you can see here you can see this quite little bar it's like a task manager which you can find it in your windows you can click on that it'll show you all the progress that's going on first of all it says the parrot gnu linux system and the release and the kernel all the information about your iso file and you have made desktop environment here in the hardware which is this and the processor it's based on available space and all that when you click on the processes it shows all the processes which are currently running sleeping just like your task manager and your windows operating system so yeah like i said it requires about 313 mb of ram approximately around that but of course this is only system related process running when compared to kali linux it's very lightweight kali linux install requires about 604 mb of ram and that too only with system related process running So like I said it's a very lightweight system. So yeah the bar is a task manager it lists all the processes that are running and all that. You obviously have a terminal which I showed earlier. The cool thing with terminal is that it goes with their interface. Other than that it's pretty much like any other normal terminal. And then there is appearance of the interface I mean. My first reaction when I saw it was wow amazing right when compared to the plain Kali Linux. So yeah you get to use cool collection of wallpapers as well. you have change desktop background here you have fonts interface and see you have quite a lot of collection of wallpapers and you can go ahead and add your customs as well that's all about the interface and like i said it's like any other normal operating system so it comes with a lot of programming languages and a bunch of text editors you also have ides as well it uses pluma as your default text editor So that's it when talking about the normal operating system. Now talking about the performance, almost all of us know that Kali Linux is a bit laggy and when you run it on a low end system sometimes it's like a nightmare when you have brute force attack going on in the background or you're doing something else. It's gonna what do you say stuck or it's very slow. But in Parrot OS it's very lightweight and doesn't lag much. As you can see it's smooth. Now talking about hardware requirements pretty much both Kali Linux and your Parrot require high end hardware but Parrot needs low specification hardware as compared to Kali. So if I have to conclude in one word Parrot is a good looking distro it's very lightweight it's resource friendly and if you want to know how much resources consuming and all that you can always go at click on the little bar which is available there click on the resources you can see the CPU history memory network history file systems and all that So basically it's a good looking distro lightweight resource friendly all those features apart Parrot security OS is, OS has pretty good collection of features as well which we discussed earlier it comes like with hell lot of tools but if you see the sections there are a lot of other things which are not in Kali Linux 
So the most pointed tool here is that in Kali Linux, suppose if you want to say private when you're doing hacking or any other stuff, you'll have to install announcer of Tor and then enable them or proxy chain. You also have option of proxy chains to stay yourself anonymous on the system while you're doing hacking or pen testing or anything. But with Parrot OS, you already have announcer of pre-installed. All you have to do is click on that start button. So let me show you how to stay anonymous. So this is one of the best feature in Parrot Security OS. It has proxy chains as well as announce surf to make yourself anonymous. So you can go for this announce surf and click on announce start here. Before that, you can check your IP of your system. So it says 106.51.73. Just remember it. You don't have to note it down anywhere. 106.51.73. Now, if I go and enable this, first of all, it'll ask you for the administration password. Give that. Okay. So basically, once you enter the password, it'll ask you if you want the announcer to kill the dangerous process, which that can be de-anonymize your clear catch files or modify your IP table rules and all that. It'll ask you if you want to do that. Just say yes. So basically, as soon as you click on S, as you can see the notifications here, the tool will attempt to kill dangerous processes that can de-anonymize you anytime. It'll clear your catch files. It'll modify your IP tables, modify your resolve config file disable your IPv6 and only allow you the outbound traffic through Tor. As you can see, it says Tor is running, started it for you. Imagine doing all this stuff by yourself if you don't have a non serve like in Kali Linux. This would be quite a bit of effort manually, but with the script already present here, it's just a click away. So Parrot Security also includes a similar script for I2P as well. Apart from that, once you've enabled, you can also check, like I said, your IP address now. So as you can see, it says global anonymous proxy activated, dance like no one's watching, encrypt like everyone is. So basically, it's saying that surf is started up. As you can see, my IP address has been changed. It was something of 160 something, but right now it's 182. So anon surf has made me anonymous. Now I can do whatever you want in an anonymous mode. So that's all I wanted to show you here. Now going back to Firefox, it has quite a documentation part. Well, it's still in the creation stage here. As you can see documentation, it's not all that well prepared or created yet. So if you have any minor doubts, you can go ahead and refer to the documentation part here. So yeah, here you go. OK, then let's go back to the Destro. One thing that you can point out about Parrot OS is that it has a lot of cryptography tools such as it has Zulu script, Zulu mount, a graphical utility that will help you mount your encrypted volumes. Then there is something called Crypt Keeper. It's another graphical utility that allows you to manage encrypted folders and much more. These utilities makes confidentiality easily accessible even with the minimal experience. I mean, if you do not have any idea about cryptography, you can easily start learning here. That's what I meant. So it just doesn't stop with cryptography or a non serve You have a lot of other tools which you might not find in Color Linux. So let me show you guys that Parrot. As you can see, you have a lot of tools. You have most used tools, which is Armitage. You have Wireshark, Zenmap, OWASP, and all that. Then you have wireless testing tools. Give me a second. Yeah, post exploitation. This set of tools, mostly you can't find them in the Kali Linux. You have OS backdoor tools, web backdoor tools. You have uh, Webco, Vivli, and all that. And you have something called Social Engineering Kit. If I'm right, it should be in the exploitation tools. Where's exploitation here? Ha, huh, you can see a social engineering toolkit. Just click on that password. So it has started up all that. So if I just click one, you have a lot of options. The update set configuration, you have social link attacks. So you have different type of attacks here. You have PowerShell attack vectors. You have mass mailer attack. You have phishing attack vectors and all that. So basically you can click on that and enable all the attacks. Not going to show you in this demo how to do it. This is just the basic introductory video about Parrot OS. So let me just close the terminal. Well, there are common tools like you have Nmap. I'm sure you know how to use Nmap. Let me just show you anyway. Nmap is one of the scanning tools. You can find it in um, information gathering. I'm sure Nmap is here. Yeah, it's one of the basic tools. Okay, let's just explore Nmap and Dimitri here. Let me just show you how to use Nmap first. Just click Nmap. You have 
all the help or then map configuration options are displayed in front of you if you don't know how to use just go through them it's pretty easy a simple example i'm already using the one which is already there just say scan me dot and map dot org okay here i go making spelling mistake again sorry about that it's gonna take a little while that's all while it's scanning let me just show you another tool which is Dimitri, it's a deep magic information gathering tool. It has ability. So here it is. It should be in the information gathering only. You have, yeah, here it goes. So basically, like I said, it has ability to gather as much information as possible about a host subdomains, its email information, TCP port scan, who's lookup, and all that. Well, let's just check out if the Nmap scanning is done. Here is the terminal. Yeah, it's going to take a little while. So once the scanning is done, it's going to show you how many seconds it took, what are the pores which are open and the closed pores and all that. Now about Dimitri, you can enable it from your terminal, but you can also do it from here. Information gathering and click on Dimitri password. So let's say. Huh, here we go. So let me maximize. All you have to do is you have a lot of options here. You have W, which performs a who's lookup. You can do it online as in using Firefox. As well, you have a lot of websites where you can gather all the information once you have your IP address or and all that. And you have retrieve ncraft.com information on a host, perform search for possible subdomains, email address, and all that. So basically, you can give all these options in one go. Let's say T R Y hyphen hyphen O option says the output your host.txt or to the file specified by hyphen O. So I just press click zero. Let me just give sudo. Let me just check if I have given any file here. I do have a file called test.txt. Okay. So like I said, in the iPhone option, it'll save your output to the .txt file or to the file specified by iPhone option. So basically just specify the file name where you want to store the, all the scan info and the website where you want to website of whose information you want to scan. So let's say the blah dot pinterest dot co. Here you go. It started a scanning. Let me just scroll up. The host name and the host IP address is showing. Once you have IP address, as you know, you can gather almost all the information. It's also showing the places where it's originated, it's created, lost, modified. You have sources, you have address here, and then yeah, last modified, created, so and all that. So basically, it's showing a lot of information here. Similarly, you can using Dimitri or a deep magic information gathering tool. You can actually gather information about any other website you want to know. Let's just check out if Nmap is done scanning. So let's see, as you can see, it's done. So I've given a website name here. Instead of that, you can go ahead and give the IP address, which is this one, and it'll show you the same results. As you can see, there are a lot of ports. Usually Nmap scans about more than 1000 ports. As you can see, it says 992 are the closed ports and these are the open ports. And suppose you want to know information about each port because basically if you're a hacker, if you try to hack something, you don't need information about all the ports. It's basically the one port which you want to. So to know that you can, there are a lot of options which are provided by Nmap. If you want to know more about by Nmap, there's a video in the Eduraker playlist all about Nmap. It's under network security. So you make sure to take a look at that. So while you are taking a look at Pirate Security OS, make sure you go ahead and watch a video on Kali Linux as well. So you will know how different Pirate OS and Kali Linux are, though they are similar in few parts. So yeah, that's it about system as in Pirate OS. So like I said, it's one good looking distro, which is lightweight when compared to Kali Linux and a lot of tools, a lot of unique tools as well when compared to Kali Linux. And it's very smoother, way smoother. Apart from all these good things, there are a few things that are problematic with Pirate OS. First of all, like you don't find a search bar here. That's not a problem, but that's one demerit you can say. And it's also a little problematic when it comes to launching your application. The process is a little slow, unlike Kali Linux. So guys, this is your Pirate OS.